lovelies i'm back this is kimberly purpose and welcome to my channel um i did a video um i believe a couple of days ago about um why we should not catastrophize ourselves as black um <coughs> how it's a misnomer i'm sorry about that and um i wanted to do i told you that i was um explaining how the that calling us black was created by Europeans, great Caucasians, great Caucasians as a way of having control. It's pure psychological. And I wanted to explain that even further um, in this video. And so, um, yeah. And I just want to, I told you all that I was going to tell you about the historical part of um, mind control and how they use psychology to label us and and some of the tactic the tactics and strategies they used against us in order to have this type of control over us from slave days even all the way to today it's still the same thing I and mean, it's just a different form of it but anyway um, I'm going to go ahead and start. It says here, digital history. Um, this is a digital history um, library from a college. I can't hardly read that. I need glasses. But I'm going to put a link below. It's the fifth chapter. It says methods of controlling the slaves. I'm going to make sure I put that in the comment below so y'all can have access to it. So y'all can read over it too if you want to um, check it out. But anyway... Here it is. Let's start reading it. It says African Americans were not naturally born, born slaves in their native land. They have been proud, free, and independent people. As slaves, many rebels, re many rebelled, many ran away, and most often slowed down on a job, avoid work, de deliberately broke tools, or pretend not to understand commands. These forms of slave resistance presented a real problem and ever sent present problems for the masters. The best way to manage slave, therefore, was often a topic of conversation among slave owners and Southern magazines were full of advice on how to manage, handle, discipline, and break slaves. At times, war on an elaborate system of control was developed that is partially described in this chapter. It includes whipping slaves, laws called slave codes, the use of religion, as well as constant punishment and intimidation. All these methods were designed to control slaves and keep them working. None of them were completely none of them were completely successful, but they helped explain why slavery lasts for 250 years. Wow, that's a long time. Um, I'm not quite sure where this from, but I guess it goes the introduction, the introduction is straight to the core. Wow. Here it is. It says here, this comes from Thomas Lattenberg and it was published in 1974 originally. So, um, yeah, so I, I just want to make sure I, I, I tell you where I'm pulling this from. I believe this is from a book. Someone must have scanned, they must have scanned it and uploaded it. <coughs> so now y'all can see, it says here, which I thought was quite interesting, in their native land, they were proud to see, this is our native land. You know, they try to cover up the fact that we were here, but we, this is our native land. And, um, and of course, we want to be free and be independent. And so... They try to break our spirit. See, the whole tactic, you know, is to try to break our spirit. But this is what they did during the slave days. It says here, a slave were whipped. You know, we see those a lot. It says a famous northern architect, Frederick Law Olmsted, made three trips through the south. His purpose was to learn through personal observation how slaves were treated. Olmsted wrote several books describing what he found. His report often cited as the most objective descriptive of life in the south because they seem to be related without bias paradoxical he characterized the beatings described in the following session as the worst case of punishment i saw in the south and not unusual it was occurred while the writer was accompanying the overseer on a routine inspection tour of the plantation 
We had twice crossed gully, and this is the quote it says, and the bottom of a thicket of brushwood. We were crossing it the third time, and the overseer suddenly stopped his horse. What's that? He yelled. Hello, who are you there? It was a girl lying down on the bottom of the gully trying to hide herself from us. Who are you? Sam saw, sir. What are you hiding there? The girl half rose, but gave an answer. Have you been there all day? No, sir. How did you get there? The girl made no reply. Where have you been all day? We could not understand the answer. Wow, this is a long quote. And it says here, after more questions, she said that her father had locked her up by accident and then went out in the morning. How did you manage to get out? Punched a plant out, sir, and crawled out. The overseer looked at the girl and then said, that won't do. Come out here. The girl rose and once walked towards him. She was about 18 years old and a bunch of keys hung around her waist. He saw them and said, uh, your father locked you in, but you had the keys. After a moment of thought, she said that they were the keys of the some other locks. Her father had the door keys. The overseer might have found out if her story was true or false in two minutes. He could have gone off to work to the girl. Her father was working in the field, but the observer had already made up his mind that the girl was lying. Wow. This story is whoa. It says, that won't do, he said. Get down on your knees. The girl knelt on, gr knee on the ground. He got off his horse and struck her 30 or 40 blows across her shoulders with the whip. And every stroke, the girl rinsed and yelled, Yes, sir. Us, uh, sir. Oh, please, sir. But did not groan or scream. Finally, he stopped and he said, Now, tell the truth. The girl repeated the same story. You have not got, got enough yet, he said. Pull up your clothes. Lie down. The girl drew her dress under her shoulder and lay down on the grass with her face towards the overseer. He continued to hit her with the raw hide whip across her naked thighs. With as much strength of before, she now shrunk away from him, screaming, Oh, don't, sir. Please don't, master. Please, sir. Oh, God. Don't do stop. Oh, God, master. I glanced all right again at the overseer. His face was grim and businesslike. He did not seem angry or excited. What is necessary to punish her so severely? Was it necessary to punish her so severely? Oh, yes, sir, he said, laughing. If, it hadn't, if I hadn't punished her so hard, she would have done the same thing tomorrow, the next day. Had the kid people on the plantation will help follow her example. Oh, you have no idea how lazy these blacks are. You know that people don't know anything about it. You will never work at all if you have were not afraid of being whipped. Wow. Oh my gosh. Just got through reading the story, a quote from a, another book, a dialogue of what a person witnessed during that time period during the slave days. And so they said right here, a, a slave is whipped. And pretty much this is what's going on today with these crazy cops who lost their freaking minds. Um, the great cockazoid cops coming around, um, gunning people, uh, aborigines down for no reason. A lot of that is to try to um, use psychology and show that they are the ones in charge coming in our neighborhood where they don't belong is none of their business to be in our neighborhood in the first place sorry about that car in the background but that's how they do it y'all they and they um the say the overseers in here with the slaves and whipping it's the same thing they're doing right now with the gunning us down with the guns and the beatings that happens all the time the police brutality it's the same thing it's like they're trying to get keep this slave narrative going. And the slavery of the day is the same thing as uh, the slavery of yesterday is pretty much the same thing as today. They have not stopped. So they're still trying to keep this narrative going. The action speaks quite loudly. So that's why I'm saying they're using pure psychology of you witnessing a, in the back in the day, you witness a person getting whooped for trying to do the right things or um, trying to. Um, 
better themselves. And now they trying to use the police going around harassing folks for stupid stuff and trying to lock people up for retarded stuff that they don't lock their own selves for. for. That's why this plague is going on against these great caucasoids. And, and they don't understand they need to lock themselves up if they want slavery so bad because it's time for them. The world roles so to be changed. You know, these, these you know, you can't keep on doing karma and think you can get away with it. And this is documentation right here that um, slavery... You know, they use um, physical abuse to um, mistreat their slaves. And like I said, if one person see another person being abused and being assaulted, you know, it ma it makes you scared. They put fear in you. I, that's the, that's why I'm, I guess that's the word I'm trying to use. They try to put fear on you to uh, be too scared to fight the system. You know, they think, oh, I'm going to use this person example and we're going to show them. And so they do use fear to make sure that you don't try something else to try to um, escape and get away. And this is what they pretty much doing today with the police brutality, making us fear, uh, fear of them um, and everything because of police brutality. And it's just ridiculous. They're trying to keep the same narrative doing, but that time is up. It's long overdue. But anyway, here's another one they're doing. Slave codes. Let's see what this says. It says slave codes were rules made for slaves, which was the law of the state. Oh, gosh, law. Every state had a set of slave codes. Often, state would copy the laws passed by another. So the slave codes could usually be quite similar on the south, all over the south. The following is a quote from the Louisiana Slave Code of 1852. It says, number one, the slave owns his master, uh, owns to the slave owes to his master all of his family total respect and absolute obedience. He must inst instantly obey all orders he received from them. You're right. All, uh, no slave can own anything of his own without the consent of his master. No slave can sell anything he has made without the master's consent. They are so full of it, aren't they? 14. Slaves, no, oh, number three. It says, no slave, no slave can be a witness in any case against a gray caucasoid. See? Then why I replaced that? I'm not going to give them no power in their fake label. 14. Slave shall always be considered real property and may be mortgage considering to the rules of law. Wow. 19. No slave shall be allowed off the plantation without written permission from his master. 29. If a slave willingly strike a white per a gray caucasoid to cause shedding of blood, the slave shall be punished with death. Whoa, they got a lot of nerve. 149. Any person who teaches a slave to read and write shall be in prison for no less than one month or more than 12 months. And see, that's why they didn't want us to read because they didn't want us to see these crazy laws that they were passing. And then they set us way behind when they freed us and, and it took a long time for us to start reading like we should, you know, almost a whole century and everything had passed. Enough time to cover up stuff. But yeah, you see, and that's why I'm saying we need to understand these laws, these colonial laws that were passed and all these slave laws they passed. And you know, we need to research this. This is a lot of um, proof of all the racist tactics that they were doing, evil deeds they were doing. And they used the law. There was a, um, a viewer in my comments. Um, I can't think of her name, but I wanted to tell her. I like what she was saying. She was saying that the laws were, they were using the laws um, to keep the labeling system going with the blacks, you know, labeling us as being black when they actually had to, we are the true aborigines. So that's why I was saying that was a good, you know, these laws were passed to keep things going. And that's what they did. They did all of this stuff. They enslaved us through the law. That slavery took place through the law, and they keep in modern day slavery through the law still to this very day. So that's another issue that we have, and that's how these um. Th this is how they do it.
through the slave codes right here and through the laws. And, they, and we still have these modern day laws going on right now. That's why they're trying to lock up, you put marijuana as illegal in some states so they can have a way to lock up Aborigines and throw them in prison for stupid stuff. Whereas the great caucasoids are abusing heavier drugs such as fentanyl, um, opioids, and meth. Um, so they don't do jail time. They, oh, oh they got an illness. No, they, they behinds need to go to jail too. They're going to, if you're going to lock up a, um, an Aborigine for something minor as marijuana, then I feel like you need to lock up the Aborigines and they have the same length of time, you know? But they don't work that way. And that's how they do it. They do it through the laws, trying to pass laws that slanted towards our Aborigines, even though we don't do nearly as much evil crap as great caucasoids, you know? Most of the criminals, that's been proven through the FBI report, uh, report that most of the criminals are the great caucasoids. And they get a chance, the reason why it looked like they don't do anything is because they don't get, they don't um, get punished like they should. But, you know, Yahweh is watching and all that is going to over, it's going to implode on them. You know, it's going to, you know, they already got a wound festering with the, the with the drug plague and not sending their crooks, you know, to jail like they should. Drug addicts need to go to prison and um, people dealing the drugs illegally should go to jail. But they don't because they are doctors and they got money and and they great caucasoids. You don't want them in prison, but it's going to backfire because you can't keep on uh, doing what you're doing. And, it, you know, most grades commit crimes against themselves. You know, it, that's going to increase because you don't send your prisoners to jail. So, like I said, that's what's going to happen. It's going to implode on them. But, you know, it's going to backfire. But anyway, let's continue. It says here, sermon preached from a slave. Oh, this is interesting. This is another quote from a book. It says here, the following sermon was preached to slaves by ministers. This is okay. This is a good one. This is how they use religion, religious tactic um, to keep a black person enslaved. And they doing it still to this very day through Christianity. It says the following sermon was preached to slaves by a minister of God. It was considered so good that it was printed in a magazine to give other masters ideas of the kind of religion slaves God should get. And see, that's what it is. It's just these stupid religions to tell us that we need to bow down and can't think for ourselves and that only the minister can think for you. That's pretty much what it's saying. But let's read. Let's see. I have just shown you the chief duties you owe to your great master in heaven. I will now tell you your duties to masters and mistress here upon earth. You must have one rule that you must always have in your minds. That is to serve your masters as if he were God himself. See, that's why they call themselves white. White means pure and godlike. And see, like I said, all of this was trying to keep slavery alive. That's why we should never call them white. We should call them gray. Give them the darkest and most jurious color to describe them because they do not need to have no more re blessings, you know, ever, you know, for all the deeds that they've done against our people. You know, it's not right. It says, uh, Pure, poor creatures, you don't consider that when you are idle and neglect your own master's business and whatever fault you're guilty of, these faults against God himself. If you steal from your master, you're stealing from God himself. You tell lies to your master, you're telling lies to God yourself. Himself. When you steal and waste your master's good and when you're saucy and wise and where you stubborn a soul and you are sinning not only against your master but also against the master in heaven you're right y'all are so full of it you great cockazoids ought to be slapped from this rule that all you do or to or do your master, ye do unto God himself. And there are several other rules which I will teach. Number one, you are to be obedient to your master in all things. Yeah, right. We got a mind and a soul of our own. We don't obey nobody, no gray cockers or in particular. You know, all, Yahweh is the one that we bow down to. You're not God. But anyway, let's continue. Number two, you are not to be I servant. I servant are those who will work hard and them 
busy when they are being watchful, when the master's back is turned and they are idle and they don't do their work. Number three, you are to be faithful and honest to your master, not wasting their goods, but showing all good and all. And four, you are serving your master with cheerfulness, reverence, and humility. You are to do your master's service with goodwill. You should serve him as you would God from the heart without any sauciness or answering back. Yeah, oh, yeah. Hell no. Nah. Anyway. So, yeah, I'm going to, um, this is awful. I'm just looking at this. And it says here, Frederick Douglass and Master Hopkins. And um, here was another word. I'm not sure what this, this is saying. It says, Frederick Douglass. Mr. Hawkins and Mr. Hawkins always finds some excuse for whipping a slave, a mere look, word, or motion, a mistake, or accident of all things for which a slave would be whipped. Does a slave look unhappy? It's said that he is the devil in it is said that he has the devil in him and must whip it out. You're right. Oh my gosh, no, it's the great cockazoist that has the devil in them. They the ones that need to be punished, and it's coming long overdue. But anyway, and it is here. It says, does he speak loudly? Does he forget to pull his hat in presence of a white man? Then he lacks respect and should be whipped for it. Does he ever dare find an excuse when he did anything wrong? Then he's guilty of impotence. One of the greatest crimes of which our slaves are guilty, does he ever dare to suggest a different way of doing things from the point from his master. Then he's doing indeed getting above himself and nothing less from him flogging what all do for him. Does he with plugging, breaking a plow while hoeing, break a hoe is the owing of carelessness. And for it, a slave must always be whipped. Wow. Oh my gosh. They whip you for everything. That is ridiculous. And now, no wonder we have a, you know, problems with psychology and everything. This stuff is embedded from years and sent, really centuries of uh, slavery being in existence. And um, our ancestors never healed from this abuse. And we haven't healed from this abuse. And this abuse is still going on today. That's why we need to wake up and um, break ourselves from this. And we do. We really need to um, break ourselves from this. And I want to also mention to you all, but this is the ending of it. Y'all want to read it, you can. They even have some questions at the end um, to see if you understand the whole, um, oh, whole reason, no, the whole thing. I think this is a great tool to use, especially if you do any type of um, lecture or, or teaching about this subject, about slavery. And how they use psychology and mind control this is a perfect tool to use and um to use and i just wanted to share this with you all and um i wanted to also mention to you all that the other day was the um i did a video about the blue moon and that happens every 150 years i want to also mention to you all and i explained to me, to you all what it means in astrology for a blue moon will hap which happens every 150 years that means it's the end of a cycle and i think it's a shift in within the universe and when there's a shift in the universe that means that a cycle is coming to end and that's when something starts anew and i think this awakening that we have is not just uh, physical. I think it's also a spiritual awakening. We're opening our eyes to a lot of the stuff that was close from us. And I believe the internet, being able to have access, being able to see things for the first time historically, how things actually were. You know, I'm download this one. I'm sorry, I just had to do a quick download. And it's just, um, <sighs> It, it it we we're coming to an end, you all. I believe. I the reason why I say that is because um the one that took place, I think they said in nineteen, uh, it was eighteen sixty eight, was when they um 
when they had the um i think the last blue moon and then um during that time was the time like 1865 is when slavery came to end they abolished slavery slavery and i read about how a lot of the masters didn't uh, the uh, owners of slaves did not tell the slaves that they were free a lot of them didn't find out that they were until two and three years after the uh, slave um the law took place and so and it happened in 1868 when a blue moon came and that's when slavery ended. And so I'm wondering, with this new blue moon, that's another cycle, which means this uh, cycle of oppression may become, it's time for us to come to, it's kind of come to the end. I think with the universe and when you look at the Bible, the year's reign of the great Caucasus is coming to, it's all in revelations that their you know, empire is, supposed, is about to crumble. It's crumbling, it's crumbling now as we speak. You know, and everything that was stolen from us is to be returned to us fruitful and more multiplied. But anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. I wanted to give you some insight out about the um, blue moon. I thought that was interesting, the timing and the dates and stuff. I thought that was interesting. You know, y'all might want to check it out and see, you know, for yourself. That there's a shift, shifting. But I just wanted to share with you all about um, the controlling, the mind control. I think it's time for us to wake up, you all, and see this past injustice that was going on with slavery, this mind control, and, and the controlling of punishment like they're doing with the police brutality. Let's go down here and see how it's applied. The whipping is the police brutality. The police is the slave patrol. That's all they are. They, they, the police is just another form of the slave patrol. The slave, the slave patrol used to... Um, the slave overseer, let me just say, used to uh, beat the slaves and and kill them sometimes, and, and and even kill them. And then today we got the great Caucasoid cops coming in the neighborhood, in neighborhoods that's not theirs. You know they don't even live out here, it out there. And if it's predominantly uh, Aborigine, there's no way it should be so many great cops in there. Um, and the whole purpose is to cause chaos. Going over there, locking people up, which is another slave, putting them in slavery for prison, and then gunning them down, trying to use them as an example of how they're going to punish us for stupid shit. But I'm sorry, excuse me, I didn't mean to cuss, but that pisses me off. Excuse my French. But anyway, um, and then here it is, the slave codes with the crazy laws that they have. I was watching another documentary. I think it was um, Dane Calloway. He said that um, they're using slavery. Uh, they made slavery legal, modern day slavery is legal through the prison system. So if you are a prisoner in prison, then you don't have no rights. And they have the right to put you in modern day slavery. Now, what they're doing, you don't have no rights. Since you don't have no rights, they can do the same things that they're doing in the past with slavery. So it's nothing more because a lot of these corporations use these private prisoners, uh, prisons to make their products and stuff for cheap. You know, for, you know, they, they don't have to pay the prisoners. And so they use their labor to um, make things. And that's why they want us in there to do their dirty work, you know, to do all the work for them. They had a dash to call us lazy. It seemed like the great Caucasus is the laziest ones of all. They didn't get that lazy butts and do their own work. Since they want to hoard everything. Anyway, and then down here is the third part is the slavery and uh, the, the uh, religion. And that's just another form. And like I said, some of these things we can do. One way is to get them out of our head. Like I said, stop calling ourselves black. You have us uh, call ourselves Aborigine. And uh, get rid of the, you know. And that's one, one thing we can do. And um, religion, stop practicing um, Christian, like Christ, this form of religion. Religion, Christianity is the religion that they introduced us to. And it's heavily indoctrinated with all this foolishness right here, of worshiping them and putting them on a pedestal. We need to end that. Uh, clear our head and rid our head of all this foolishness 
and replace it with what our indigenous people used to do. And another thing is using our indigenous tongue. I've been studying Hebrew and reading up on that. You know, I found a good YouTube channel to study a little bit more about the Hebrew language. Because I heard Cherokee was some, type, some kind of way linked to the Hebrew language. Um, and so that's why I was trying to learn more about it. And yeah, and so a lot of this stuff is still going on, y'all. And then, like I said, the labeling system, that's another way they're doing it, is having us call ourselves um, black when we're not black. When you take a sheet of paper, you look at my hand, I'm not the same color as a black sheet of paper. And I said all Aborigines are not the color of a sheet of paper. Even people from Africa who are the darkest, you take people from Sudan, they're not that color of that sheet of paper. All of us are brown. We're brown people, okay? And so that's none of my control. They call us that because they want to use us as second-class citizens. They want to make us be outclass. That's the bottom line. They use it through the laws, and the laws is tied into that labeling system. And I want I want to thank the you viewer who mentioned that and pointed it out. I, I appreciate you for pointing that out, and that's true. They want to um, use that labeling system as a way to uh, keep us at a certain state. And it's sort of hard. Another thing with the slave codes, you cannot own property. Um, and that's true. They make it hard. They still doing it. That's still modern day slavery where they're trying to keep up, blocking us from being able to own property, jacking up the price of the interest rate on purpose. Little things like that to keep make it harder for us to get ahead. So, yeah, and I did a video on that about um, how um, they use pra racist tactics to prevent us from owning properties in nice areas. And that was done by design. That was done intentionally. And they're trying to keep the slave narrative going. So like I said, these are the things that are used to have control over us. And these are the things that we need to put an end to. And one way is to go back to our digital new roots, learn who we are, and um, return back to what our ancestors were. You know, they're calling for us. They really are. Y'all need to listen to Chief Kalanago. Um, I think his video channel is um, American Aboriginal Son, something like that. American Aboriginal Son. He talks about this as well. You know, how we need to learn more about these laws and stuff and understand these, um, you know, these tactics that they use and learn, have the power and insight. All of that is important. But, you know, I'm getting a little long-winded, you guys. You know, I can talk, 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 talk. <laughs> I might do another live stream soon. I haven't decided what day. I might do it today. I'm not sure. I'm just still debating. But if I do, I'm going to announce it on my Facebook. And also, um, yeah, I'm going to announce it through my social media to let you all know when I'm, I'm going to do it. I do usually announce it to everybody right before I'm going to do it. I might do one tonight, but please like this video and don't forget to subscribe. Um, I'm a, I have my um, links to uh, my pay, not PayPal, um, Patreon, and also to my GoFundMe. I also have a link to my Facebook page and uh, I have a uh, community there. You know, you can join it and you can also like my um, Facebook page as well. And um, yeah, I have updates. I put up videos. I put up pictures and updates and everything there. Yeah, I can check that out as well. And yeah, it, I would love to hear from you guys. I would like to see what you think of this. And um, to next time, peace, family, and be blessed. Bye-bye.